Well, my name is Peter Kroll. I'm the inventor of the Bitcoin paper wallet. Bitaddress.org is my open source project. And these days I'm leading Bitcoin education here in Curacao with my btccuracao.com project. Nice. And you are also the inventor of the dice. What's the dice thingy? Let's yeah, go. on bitaddress.org, uh, I was the first person to create a way where you could roll dice and create a private key. Nice. Uh, something good to tell you on Seed Signer, they have got it in NVK's wallet also. Okay. So yeah, they're, they're incorporating this thing into their... I like thing. that. And there's an, another option called Foundation Devices. So there are multiple hardware wallets. <laughs> I've been approached by all these hardware wallets over this past years. I'm a two years into Bitcoin and I feel hardware wallets are safe. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking I will get myself a nice hardware wallet that is not Ledger. Mm -hmm. But meeting you has made me question everything that I've learned about Bitcoin over the last two years. So let's dive in. Like, I know you're yeah. really angry about something. Let's start <laughs> with that. And then let's okay. dive in with that. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a lot of myths around Bitcoin wallet security. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to share with the community like what I'm teaching people in 2023, which is not actually creating paper wallets. I have a different approach that I'm um, sharing with people and I want to get that out there to the community okay. and create some discussion okay. and I want to just share a bad take that I saw on Twitter today so there was someone who has a wizard picture as their icon <laughs> and they said this people who keep shilling airplane mode smartphones as a secure way to store large sums of Bitcoin you do realize that pressing a software button on your phone does nothing to deactivate or sever the connection to the cellular modem that's always on and connected right question mark the problem with this take is you can just power off that phone and then it does sever the connection to the cell tower. And this is again, you know, um, security experts, computer science people prioritizing the wrong attacks. Mm -hmm. So nobody's actually been attacked using this threat that he's worried about. Okay, so you're advising on to having a phone, get a software wallet on it and disconnect it be not connected to the internet yes but i i want to just now reset go back to the start okay and how do we teach brand new people about bitcoin okay. you know so for example yourself you're two years in and you've been living more of like a spend and replace lifestyle yes. than a hodl lifestyle yes. and i think you know there's 10 percent of the world population is already hodling bitcoin uh -huh. and so we have to answer this question is how do we bring people through the spend replace door get them into hodling and that be the journey for new people wow nice okay okay so that really is like a lightning first approach. And also what I wanna uh, do today is really I'm teaching the teachers. So the people who give the recommendations, the people whose friends look up to them for advice, they're recommending hardware wallets to people. I wanna kind of um, bust some of those myths, open people's minds to a better approach that is less prone to human error because okay. actually human error is the number one problem for losing your bitcoins and i want to also give a shout out um, to pamela morgan who wrote a book crypto asset inheritance planning and i recommend that for everyone who's um, hodling a large sum or for the the long term okay so in this security model it doesn't matter if you're a novice or an expert this model applies to both people because an expert can have errors that are novices. So their solution has to accommodate the novice as well. Okay. Um, before we go in, yes. this can be used by a Bitcoiner or a crypto person by anyone, as you suggest? Only a Bitcoiner. So actually in this security model, we're excluding altcoins. And if you want to store altcoins, that's going to tamper with your Bitcoin security. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. That's good to go. So that's like a whole out of the box conversation that we won't include here today. It's okay. just Bitcoin only. Awesome, yeah. cool. And so for a brand new person, like we're gonna break this down into four levels. Okay. By the time we get to level four, I wanna just list kind of what you need for the ultimate security. Okay. And then we'll, we'll start back at level one. Fair enough. So by the time we get to level four, we should have bought two brand new phones, six crypto steel capsules for storing the backup phrases. We need two physical addresses for hiding items where you live and work. 
Okay. And then we need two other physical addresses for hiding items where a family member lives and at a bank safety deposit box. Okay. okay. So we're going to remember that for later in the story. Lovely. Okay, so now we're going back to a brand new Bitcoiner that we just met on the street or it's a new friend that's asking for advice. We first want to teach them to install a lightning wallet on their everyday phone. This uh, should be custodial. Maybe later in the Bitcoiner's journey, they'll learn about non-custodial wallets for lightning, but they really need to start with custodial because they need to receive their first $5 of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. understand what sats are, that sats and their national currency have a floating exchange rate, how to receive, how to spend. Okay. Okay. And now that you have Bitcoin on your everyday phone, you should put a pin, a pattern, a fingerprint or a face uh, scanner to unlock your phone. It should no longer be unlocked anymore. Okay, so okay. level one is your lightning wallet. Yes. Now, level two is when you've stacked enough sats mm -hmm. on your lightning wallet okay. that you really should be learning about self-custody and the magic of Bitcoin that Satoshi has gifted to us, mm -hmm. you know, separating money and state by getting a non-custodial layer one wallet, mm -hmm. which I recommend Blue Wallet. Blue Wallet is an open source wallet. It's not for profit. It's really, um, their, their tagline is built by Bitcoiners with love. And I really do feel that from them and think it's true. Okay. So this is where um, you would put this Blue Wallet on the same phone as your Lightning Wallet. Okay. Okay. And you'll go through the 12 word steps, writing those down. But also this is where your first Crypto Steel capsule comes into place and you um, store the 12 words there in the capsule and hide it somewhere in your house. Um, and that's basically level two. Okay. Yeah. So we have level one is your wa lightning wallet, which can be either of them. Uh, level two is your blue wallet in the same phone. Same phone. And we have a crypto steel and the mm -hmm. crypto steel, we are saving it somewhere in the house. Yes. Fair enough. Yeah. So here we haven't protected people from violence. If there is a violent situation, they're going to lose their Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. Only when we get to level four, are we properly protecting the user from violence? Okay. All right. So now we're going to level three, and this is where we need a brand new phone, either a Google or an iPhone that you should buy from a retail store, hopefully with the plastic on it, but not an old phone because those could have viruses and malware. Okay. So this is going to be our quote unquote cold storage and we're going to put blue wallet on it as well. Mm -hmm. Write down the 12 words, put that into a crypto steel capsule and we're going to hide that cold phone and the crypto steel capsule at home. And the benefit of this cold storage is we're not walking around on the streets with it. Mm -hmm. So we're safe from physical violence when we leave our house. Okay, level three got us safety when we're out on the streets. Now, if someone steals our phone or there's violence, they don't get our level three cold storage. Okay, you're gonna power down this phone when you hide it. Mm -hmm. And that's like uh, related to the one criticism that I mentioned earlier about SIM cards and all that. And on this phone, I forgot to mention no SIM card. Um, no regular email. I know you might have to make a dummy Gmail account, let's say on that phone, but your regular email where people are phishing you should not be there. There should be no chat apps. You only are, are installing the Blue Wallet app on that phone. All right, okay. fair enough. So we have got already two phones in the game now. Yes, our daily phone and one brand new phone. Okay. Yeah. Now we're gonna go to level four if you're ready for it. Okay, let's go. Wow, okay. this is it, man. This is yeah. the, this is the okay. ultimate moment where your hardware wallets go. Yes. So out of play. <laughs> yeah. Level four, um, we're talking about creating a two of two wallet. Uh, multi-sig. Multi-sig. Okay. Okay. So that means both phones have to authorize the transaction for the money to move. Mm -hmm. And the keys are generated uh, separately on different devices. So we're also protected from if one device has been tampered or hacked. We're gonna call uh, in this two of two setup, this is level four, we're gonna have seed A and seed B. 
So seed A, what I call my seed, you know, it belongs to me, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm keeping it um, where I live. And seed B is something I share and it's mm -hmm. not stored where I live. And if someone comes to my house, I don't have access to it. So I can't actually send them any Bitcoins from this level four wallet, mm -hmm. regardless of the level of violent threat. I'm just physically not able to spend those funds. Okay. Okay? Good. And um, seed A mm -hmm. should be added as a new wallet inside the blue wallet on that phone we used for our level three wallet. Okay, fair enough. Okay. So on the new phone that we bought, so there were already two phones. Yes. So the first phone we were using day to day life. Yes. The second phone was for the level three. Yes. On that phone, you downloaded a blue wallet and now you have gotten a second wallet on the same blue wallet application as it lets you do so. Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. And that wallet type is called vault okay. in, in the blue wallet terminology. Mm -hmm. And when you create it, it gives you the option two of and then you pick two. Okay. Okay. Cool. And um, in a future video, I can defend all these recommendations I'm giving and talk about why two of two is better than any other type of multisig. But here we want teachers to understand this process. So I'm just trying to keep it simple to the steps that I'm recommending here. Fair enough. Okay. So in the beginning, we talked about we were not going to buy one brand new phone, but we were going to buy two brand new phones. Yes. Okay. So now we're talking about a third phone adding into this setup. Okay. Okay. All right. This is going to hold seed B. Okay. And this is going to be the one where we distribute or share around. It's not physically on our person and it's not physically at our house. It's not at our work. It's not any of the places where we work and sleep on a daily basis. Okay. So no one who is tracking us on a daily basis can stop us anywhere and get seed B. Okay. Okay. So seed B we um, put on blue wallet on this third phone. Yes. And then we're going to give that phone to a family member. Okay. So in this scenario, for simplicity, we're just going to say mom's house. Okay. We're taking the phone to mom's house and that um, seed B, mm -hmm. we're also putting it in a crypto steel capsule. Okay. Just like the CD. Just like CD. We okay. also are doing a capsule there. Okay. And this third phone and the capsule, we're giving it to mom and she's storing it at her house. Awesome. Okay. And we're also making another copy of that steel backup of the seed B of seed B mm -hmm. and we're taking it to the bank and putting it at a bank safety deposit box. Fair enough. Okay. And the important part of having to see another human being that doesn't live with you for seed B is that if you're under some violent threat, kidnapping or whatever, and you go to the bank and they've beaten you up, you're there able at the bank to have a private moment with a bank teller before you get into your vault okay. and tell them to call the police. Okay. And if you show up at your mom's house or another family member that you've given seed B to, you're also able to say, I'm under duress and please call the police. There's someone outside waiting for me to leave your house nice. with the key. Okay. So you got level one covered, your day-to-day -day phone, mm -hmm. which has your lightning wallet as well as your blue wallet. Yes. Level two is the same, the blue wallet. So level one, level two is one phone. Mm -hmm. Level three is a new brand new phone out of plastic, get a new phone and on which you put your blue wallet and you make a crypto steel key mm -hmm. for the same and you hide it in your house. Mm -hmm. Then the level four is seed A and seed B. Mm -hmm. Seed A, you put it on the third, uh, on the second phone that you had bought in your house. Mm -hmm. And the seed B is you buy a new phone mm -hmm. now for your mom mm -hmm. and you also make a crypto steel for it. For the seed A also? Yes. Uh, the seed A is also in your house. Yes, so it's like there's so, one cold phone that's mine and one cold phone that belongs to mom. Awesome. And the seed A keys are with you and the seed B keys are with your mom. Yes. And also in the bank. So it's, and it's going to be two of two. Yes. And this entire setup will secure your Bitcoin for generations. Yes. And it's much better than using any other hardware wallet. Why? Okay. Well, hardware wallets, they separate the signing from the software device that is scanning your receive address where you're trying to send out to the recipient's address and also you're getting blockchain data on that software and you're transmitting the transaction so if you separate 
the internet side from the signing side, you create a massive attack surface, and that's actually where we see most of the attacks on hardware wallets happen. And hardware wallet vendors, they're a for-profit business, and you know some of the attacks are out of the scope for what they're actually claiming to defend you from. And my approach is open source. I don't make any money from it. I'm trying to optimize for reducing human error and also that your heirs will be able to get your coins because if your daily phone has blue wallet, your cold phone has blue wallet, and your two of two is using blue wallet, you can start teaching your family members that are your heirs to also have blue wallet on their daily phones and that increases their confidence level when they have to then deal with your cold wallet whether it's level three or the level four multi-sig. Okay, I would, I, would say, I would add in here, last February, Blue Wallet shut down their lightning operations, which was a big question mark onto the entire way forward. I know that was a lightning wallet that was custodial. Mm -hmm. And come back this year, November, and Wallet of Satoshi shut down their operations for United States of America. Uh, what guarantee is that these wallets will not be taken down from the Play Store or the App Store or these wallets will still be there in the coming future because yes you say this but wallet was made with love mm -hmm. but uh, we saw what <laughs> love did now so what's your take on that like well since Blue you're going out of your yeah. comfort zone or uh, you are the creator of bit address you are the creator of the paper wallet mm -hmm. you are letting that go and supporting a wallet yes like why like what makes you say so like i myself i'm in question i have doubts yes well um paper wallets are fine and great for people who are comfortable with them but when you go to spend from your paper wallet there's an attack surface there which is which app are you going to import that paper wallet into and doing that safely is like an education uh, question for users who have just printed a paper wallet and stored it away for five years now they want to use it actually I would recommend them to use blue wallet okay. to scan in that paper wallet so then in this recommendation we can just cut out the paper wallet part because if they have blue wallet and they power it off and there's a pin on it that's protecting them from hacks so hardware wallet vendors as part of their marketing their um, imagining that you're getting hacked over the cell tower or that some computer geek uh, stole your hardware wallet and now the seeds on a secure element they won't be able to crack it but the person who's going to physically steal your hardware wallet or phone there's less than one percent chance that they have the knowledge to be able to like hack into it okay so my question goes back to why blue wallet why do you think it will survive well, Blue Wallet, um, it's doing everything right, open source, culture wise, and with the standards. And even if the people who work on Blue Wallet today abandon it, it can just be forked on GitHub and someone else can make that forked version of the app available on the app stores or available as an APK. So an open source project will typically last longer than a company. Fair enough. No. Okay. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay. Yeah. So we got your blue wallet covered. You said you practically said yes, your paper wallet is good. But if you have a blue wallet, blue wallet is better than your paper wallet. For, for new people, everyday people, inheritance and building confidence, holistically, yes, the blue wallet is better. And if you're an advanced user who wants to roll dice, you can also roll dice with the blue wallet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm going to add on to one point here, which we were ch chatting about was the BIP39. Mm -hmm. Why do you say BIP39 isn't good? Because I okay. am a user yes. of Samurai Wallet. Yes. So for the people who are listening, I'm a user of Samurai Wallet. Mm -hmm. And on Samurai Wallet, I have a BIP39. Yes. That means I need to put in a password before I can retrieve my uh, funds. Like I lost my phone. So yes. I had to put in the 24 keywords I had. Mm -hmm. But along with that, I also had to put in the password. Yes. So... BIP39 is great, but the BIP39 passphrase, that's a, a bad standard. It's kind of uh, 
a poor man's two of two. So we talked about this two of two level four, which is better than using this BIP39 passphrase. So the problem with those passphrases is wallets um, accept different lengths for those passphrases. Some of them will truncate it and make it short, but actually if it's giving you a second factor of security, it should be long and something that can't be guessed or brute forced. And also how the hardware wallet um, vendors suggest you use that passphrase is typically like memorize it or come up with it from your head and write it down and store it somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. So any type of security where you're making the randomness in your head, that's completely flawed. And remembering things is a bad uh, way to keep access to your Bitcoin. So uh, people have been in Bitcoin for a long time know that people who lost their Bitcoin typically say they forgot their password or they lost wherever their seed was stored. Or in a boating accident. <laughs> or in a boating accident, yeah. <laughs> Careful when you're on the choppy waters. <laughs> and what we, in this system, there is some memorizing. So we're memorizing our hiding places, but this is something we've evolved to do over like tens and tens of thousands of years, burying things in the dirt, hiding things, but remembering strings of characters, remembering phone numbers, remembering passwords, we're poorly evolved for that. And if you don't um, type out a password or use it for six months, you'll forget it. So a lot of, Computer security people advise memorizing passwords, which has um, always been a wrong approach to things. Nice. Uh, I have a question on this. These phones that we are getting now, we have three phones. Mm -hmm. They all will have patents to unlock your blue wallet because blue wallet asks for a password too when um, you're logging in. Or no, you don't have to put the pin on the blue, blue wallet. wallet. And I suggest you don't put the pin. So the pin should just be on the phone which will encrypt the storage. Okay, so you advise to encrypt your phone rather than or encrypting your blue wallet. Absolutely. If you try to put too many pins, people forget the pins and then you're losing one of your copies of your keys. Okay, so you're saying, you're in, in short, what I understand is this is, I should trust, as a Bitcoiner, they say don't trust, verify. Yes. And you're saying to us all of these things after verification because mm -hmm. you have been in this eco space for a long time. So what I understand is that I should trust my Samsung or my Android or my Apple phone more than my hardware wallet. Yes, absolutely. They have thousands of security professionals, researchers, and their brands are worth hundreds of billions of dollars. So if their devices are hacked, it's quite more um, damaging to their reputation than a small uh, Bitcoin hardware wallet startup. Okay. And um, that's typically the marketing thing is hardware wallets have less um, chips on them, less uh, code on the actual physical motherboards. And this is reducing the attack surface. But this is like a false narrative because okay. the attack surface is just, can you decrypt my Google Android or my Apple iPhone? And we've seen in several cases that even the FBI has trouble hacking iPhone and people who are going to steal your phones are not able to hack your phones. Those are two separate groups of people. Okay. And so I trust my Apple, I trust my Samsung, I trust Blue Wallet more than any other hardware wallet. And this will keep my Bitcoin secure for the coming future, for the coming generation. My last question from this will be, what are the chances or the probability, and this is a noob question. Mm -hmm. Finally, if somebody is listening to this, I'm a noob too. <laughs> uh, what is the probability or the chances of somebody else generating a new wallet to regenerate the same 12 words? Well, as long as it's proper randomness, that's essentially impossible because there's more uh, wallet private keys than there is like atoms in the universe. And so, yeah. Okay. There we go. Happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That gives me a piece and that gives me shine. Anything else you want to say? Um, well, 
thank you for like having this discussion with me today. Yeah. So it's good to hear from someone who's using Bitcoin every day and hearing the advice on Twitter and met a lot of these good people. There's a lot of talented people in the hardware wallet ecosystem. And I feel like what's missing is a voice from the open source community where this is a not for profit recommendation from someone who has a pedigree in this. And thanks for listening to me today, bro. I'm going to just say it in the terms of Satoshi Nakamoto before he left. You have just kicked the hornet's nest. <laughs> and they're going to come for you. <laughs> right, bye -bye. Okay, bro.